It's time for the Wrestling Perspective Podcast. We're going to skip all the hoopla and the bullshit that we normally do. Lars Fredericks and Dennis Farrell here with Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake, thank you so much for taking some time out of your night to uh, talk to two guys that just absolutely love you. I appreciate that a lot, guys. Really Uh, good. I'm going to jump right into these questions. And uh, I got to know. We ask a lot of the veterans about talking to the younger talent in today's wrestling and what they try to teach the younger guys. But for a guy like you, what has the younger talent taught you about today's wrestling? Oh, my God. I'm going to be careful how I answer that. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Everything is pre-recorded so we can edit if we need to. (laughs) The art of selling is lost. Yeah. Um, what have they taught me? Uh, they've taught me that you don't have to know how to uh, <laughs> fucking do shit right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, they have taught me things, man. Uh, they they amaze me. They really do. And they go out and, and do so many things, even if they don't do it at the right time. You know, their sense of timing and the way we did things wouldn't work wouldn't work at all um my god I, I would love to see bill watts try to try to get get through these guys he'd finally explode the world could be happy again but uh yeah tough question guys well I, you know i think about your career and you know basically you spoke you sold you brought the psychology mm-hmm. and obviously we i think we all can agree that that's something that's kind of lacking in today's professional wrestling but if there are good things that you can see if uh, the forward progression do you have like there's one thing out of maybe the modern day wrestling that you're you you were sort of uh i don't know maybe excited about or you know, oh, I'm excited whenever I see all these moves they're doing. Are you kidding me? But, uh, you know, I love, I love to watch Kenny Omega. You know, I, he does some great stuff, man. Unbelievable stuff. And uh, oh, the kid that works with Sting. Uh, Darby Allen. Darby. Darby Allen does some great things, man. And uh, then you look at MJF, man. And he, he's got it rocking. That kid got some heat. <laughs> yeah. With <Yeah>. everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Through all your, you know, troubles and tribulations and redemption story, did you still follow wrestling or was there a period when you came out of it, you started watching it again? And because the, there was that period where wrestling changed five, six different times through from the attitude era to this era to the PG mm-hmm. era to where we are today. It was it hard or from a guy who grew up in one certain way that it was for so long to see it change so quick so many times? Well, it, it really freaked me out whenever I see the product today. You know, it is so different than what we did. And uh, it amazed me. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not my cup of tea, you know. Uh, I love I love to see what they do, and and I try to help them all I can with interviews, and uh, they catch on pretty quick. And uh, the guys are the guys are amazing, man. Just to watch, you know their, their movement. Uh, I just wish I just wish that the public would let them do the things a little bit more in sync if you will, and, and something with timing. Uh, right now, they're going 100 miles a minute, man, and it's hard for me to keep up. But whenever I, you know, whenever I was down and out, man, I, you know, I turned it off. I had to, man, or I'd stuck a gun in my mouth, you know, just because I'd missed it so much. And uh, that was the one thing that uh, AEW gave me is that when I came back, they let me go out to the ring and do that thing with uh, Cody. And it meant so much to me to go out and feel the ropes again, feel the mat, smell it. You know, it, it was just an amazing feeling that I had. And I really appreciate that. 
Well, you know, you mentioned Cody Rhodes, and I don't necessarily know if I ever heard an opinion from you about what happened to him at WrestleMania, because a lot of people were obviously very upset that he didn't win the world championship. Mm -hmm. And then there was people there that were saying, well, you know, there was another, you know, crowd saying, well, Roman should be, you know, the champion, uh, the champion, and there's more of the story to unfold. What was your initial reaction to that? Well, Knowing Vince McMahon, I could have told you that's what was going to happen. Because everybody just knew Cody was going to take it. And if, if everybody's calling for it, Vince is going to do right the opposite. You know, he doesn't want anybody calling his shit, you know. So uh, as far as business-wise, I think that uh, it, dis it did disappoint a lot of people. I don't think it hurt Cody. I mean, my God, they threw everything but the kitchen sink at him. And um, he held up pretty much till the end. So that didn't hurt him. But at some point soon, I would hope that uh, they would give the title to him. I look at today's creative freedom that the wrestlers have, and maybe this is just me assuming that you guys didn't really have all that much creative freedom, you know, in your era of wrestling. If, really? It, <sighs> <laughs> if you guys had it, how yeah. would that have impacted or changed your career or career of other wrestlers back then? I don't think it would have changed anything we did. I mean, I, I was never told to do anything. I just went out and did what I do. Vince McMahon never came to me and said, we want this done in this way. You know, no, 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 no. He never did that. You know, same with the interviews. I had full carte blanche on it on the interviews i did 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 what i wanted to do and said what i wanted to do and it was all right i think the guys today are, are tied down a lot more than, than we were in the way that we are all consuming wrestling today i mean there's so many different promotions you mm -hmm. you, you know you have the aws the wwe's you got impact you got nwa right. i mean there's so much wrestling to consume um do you think that, that 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 the wrestling fan audience is being overwhelmed by how much that there is out there? Yeah, I do. I think there's I think there's way too much out there. Um, I mean, my God, just just the amount that WWE puts out there weekly. And then you throw in AEWs. I mean, how many hours a week is, is wrestling on now? 30? <laughs> Something it's got to be some wild ass number, but uh, yeah, I think they're. I don't think it's hurting wrestling. Um, it's giving people an opportunity to see a lot of different things. I just wish somebody had the balls to to go back and go old school on everybody. I I know NWA is trying. I don't know if they are on the big enough platform to really make that impact. We're you know of course fans of them here, but. Mm -hmm. Watching you as a manager brings a smile to my face because it feels like, you know, I feel like we grew up in the greatest time of wrestling where managers, yeah. managers, they had impact and it, it just made the story that much better. When you go out there and there's Jake Roberts, the manager versus Jake Roberts, the performer, mm -hmm. is there a difference psychologically for, for you going into this new role as a manager like that? Oh, oh God, yeah, man. I mean, I can't. I can't react and do the things that I normally would. Uh, number one, my body can't take it. <laughs> you know, I just won't do it. But uh, yeah, it's a different mindset because I've got to be careful which way I go. I don't ever want to be what the people are watching. Mm. You know, I want them to be watching Lance. So I, I keep it pretty cool out there. Was there any plans of you, like, you know, maybe uh, putting together a bigger stable? Because I mean, with the way that you can talk and your, yeah. just your physical presence, you know, just in the wrestling world. I mean, everybody knows who fucking Jake the Snake Roberts yeah. is, right? So yeah. was there any any talk to get get you like with a stable, like, you know, yeah. like- be Like so many of the other guys, yeah. Uh, I wish there had been, but there hasn't. And, and that's okay, you know. If, uh, he wants me to bark and howl at the moon. I'll do that, man, because I respect Tony Khan. Uh, I think he's a great, great man. 
I mean, just a wonderful man to work for. And uh, the things that he's brought to, to the table are awesome. Yeah, there's going to be some bumps and humps and some things everybody shakes their head about, but hell, they do that every week to Vince too, you know? So let's just keep moving forward, man. Well, that's one of the, you know, I wanted to just add on to this question because that's the one thing that I can always expect from Jake the Snake Roberts. When you started, you're more in these like karate pants. Then you became, mm -hmm. you know, this larger than life character through the WWF. Right. What do you visualize, you know, given the opportunity, Jake, the snake, the manager, is he, uh, you know, as, as, uh, how could I say flamboyant, if that's yeah. the right word, um, you know, depending on what Tony Khan wants, I can do anything. Yeah. I can go out there and be colorful. I can go out there and be obnoxious. I can go out there and, and be the reason, uh, people watch, but, for me, I, I want that to be on Lance. So until Tony Khan tells me, Jake, turn it on, then I'll do something. But not until then. All right. We've talked about Lance a few times. We brought him up. What do you see in Lance as, you know, maybe Jake the Snake, the fan, that maybe the fans aren't connecting or clicking with that we need to go, hey, Let's change our vision this way to this guy because he's he's been on the show before, an amazing guy, great to us. Uh, but sometimes, you know, that stuff gets lost in translation from on paper to on TV and you being a guy that's worked with him and working with him. How should we watch him? Just let him just let him entertain you, man. That's all. I mean, because right now he doesn't have a slot that he's fitting in. You know, right now he's just being used to, you know, to do the job when it's needed. But if he was to ever get the opportunity, he could damn sure carry it. You know, when, when you're in a position that you're in, basically it's, it's like a, you know, it's one of the brighter minds in the backstage are, mm -hmm. do, do people come up to you and ask you for advice? Yeah. Oh yeah. What is the most common question? Is it just watch my match? What, I mean, watch my match and critique it. That's the most common thing. You know, we, do. we we hear a lot of the guys, you know, uh, talk about the disconnect between your generation and today's generation. We've talked a little bit about that. And when you watch a match, do you have to change how you talk to these guys to fit into what they're doing? Or when you give them the advice, do you still look through the goggles of back in your day? I still go with the way I feel, man. You know, and uh, I tell them that. You know, that I feel like they're losing a lot, that they're wasting a lot. And uh, they can get more out of things if they just let it happen. If there's somebody in, you know, the company right now that you would have loved to have a match with or be a tag partner with, um, you know, who would that be besides Lance? Oh, my God, there's several, man. Um, MJF. Uh, Jericho. Um, boom, boom, boom. Oh, I would love to have worked with. Uh, oh, my God, I said his name earlier. Darby, Darby Allen? No, from Canada. Uh, from Winnipeg. Oh, Omega. 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 I would love to work with Omega. What would you do differently? Like, would you slow it down? Would you? What? What would Absolutely. you do? Absolutely, I'd lay on them till they blew up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he blew up, or the crowd blew up. <laughs> no. I'm telling you, if you went out there and grabbed a hold and held on to it, the crowd would get with it. Well, we've seen that, you know, with MJF. Yes, but we've seen that in that company with MJF and CM Punk. It was old school kind of wrestling style that mm -hmm. obviously worked. Um, why do you think that there's so much uh, more trying to be brought into a match? I mean, you're back there. You see the, you know, the way that these kids are thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm just the way you know, the way these guys are thinking is they're trying to outdo the guy before him and the guy after him. You know, they see it as an opportunity to get get all their stuff in. And by God, they're going to do it. 
<laughs> you know, they're going to do it, man. They're going to try to do every damn thing they can because they want to showcase their stuff. I get that. But they don't understand that showcasing it, there's one way to do it and there's another way to do it. If I was going to showcase something, I'd go back to wrestling and surprise the shit out of everybody and then watch the crowd's reaction. You have a million great stories i've watched i think lars and i we watched all your interviews and we were just talking about books and are are you thinking of writing a a book or a biography i've of got a book that's finished right now and uh it's just going to take a couple of months to uh to have it edited and uh well they're just well, actually they're almost done editing it and uh publishing it i wrote it all myself every damn word of it and uh it's done my way it's about 600 pages wow yeah and uh, that that only covers the first half of my career oh wow because i go in depth and talking about wrestling uh it's i'm not out there to blow whistles on anybody except myself but I don't spend time talking about other people in my book. I talk about what I'm doing, what I did, and how and, and the way I did it. Okay, so growing up in California, okay. you know, obviously in, in the 1970s, the Oakland Raiders and the Oakland A's, those were always my teams. Obviously, the first quarterback I ever saw with my own two eyes was by a guy by the name of Ken Stabler, also known as the Snake. I always I felt like there was a correlation between the two. But my question for you is, did you two ever, were you guys ever in the same room? Did you ever meet? I never met Kenny Stabler. I have talked to his wife and kids because, um, well, they reached out to me because I'd been talking about Kenny, you know. And, uh, I mean, I love the Raiders, man. They were They were the bad boys, you know. They were the bad boys. So... Who can't love Kenny Stabler, man? I don't know. Yeah, well, bro know, it broke my heart when he went to New Orleans. I can tell you that. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. I know it did, bro. I yeah. know it did. You know, uh, listening to you talk in today's yeah. wrestling and, and back then wrestling, mm -hmm. is there anything in wrestling today that maybe excites you? Because you seem like a guy, when you get in a ring, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Like things, people... You you are Jake the Snake Roberts. So when you're out there, what excites you about being out there? Oh, just stepping through those ropes, man. Because once you step through those ropes, you have the opportunity to make those people stand up, sit down, cry, laugh, whatever you want. And manipulating people's emotions, I always said masturbating people's emotions, because basically that's what you're doing. You take them for a ride, you get them almost there to the pop, and you leave, take them away from them. And there's joy in that, man. There's, yeah, I love doing that. I love being a heel and going out and doing that. Well, do you find that today's like crowd, do you feel like they're a little bit more finicky? Do you feel like they're a little bit more hard to impress? They are. They definitely are. It, it, well, it's because of what they're watching. You know, they're waiting for a series of spectacular moves because that's what they're giving them. You know, and if you're going to advertise doing it, you got to come through with it. And uh, each time somebody gets in the ring and they start flying around, well, okay, people say, cool, we dig that. Let's see what you got, kid. And they go for it. Well, Jake, let me ask you this then. Do you just hit the brakes? If people were to ask you your opinion on how to change that culture, do you just hit yeah. the brakes and start with match one and keep going? Do yeah, I would. I yeah. would. You know, I mean, uh, if it was my company, I would do that. But it's not my company. You know, and uh, I'd probably lose my ass, but it's the way I was raised, you know, and, and uh Nothing against these kids today. They, nobody works harder than they do. They work three times as hard as I did. But uh, I work smarter than they do. So that's the difference. Well, you know, when you go to as a spectator, I love independent wrestling. And oh yeah, 
<clears throat> I mean, that's kind of where I, you know, kind of fell in love with wrestling in the first place, you know, because it just was, it, it was a cheap ticket. You could get entertained. Yeah. And, you know, th there's a company here in town, West Coast Pro. And mm -hmm. the way that they build their shows, it all makes sense. You know, that not everybody's fighting out the side of the ring on every right. match. Everybody's right. uh, Hurricane Rana or over the top rope or whatever. It's a steady build to the whole show. Now, to me, that's the way it should be. Okay. So, because my, my, my question is to you is like, when you're building a show, which you obviously could learn how to do, mm -hmm. you know, is it always sort of customary to have uh, the first match be, be a very exciting, high-flying kind of match? Well, if, if it were my company, the first match would be nothing but wrestling. You know, no punches even. Whoa. Just go out and wrestle. You know, nothing outside the ring. Keep it all in the ring and wrestle. There's no need. Hell, today, who throws the first punch? Usually the baby face. If you can figure out who the baby face is. <laughs> We talked to, I believe, Smash a few weeks ago. We asked him this question about back in your day, the industry was guarded. You were you were only invited into the wrestling industry. Now you have camps and this and that, and people have podcasts, and they're out right. giving shoot interviews and all this stuff. How hard was it for you to, I guess, accept the new age of wrestling where it's okay to talk about the past business, to open up and, and be free with how you talk in, in – yeah be heard it, it took some time for me to get used to that man I, i'd bite my tongue sometimes when i'd start to talk because i'd be like no i can't do that you know but you gotta you gotta you gotta kind of get with it or, or get with it or get out one of the two and uh, i still want to play so I, i'll play by their rules well you know we were asking you know a lot of the the the, the veterans that do come on the show that mm -hmm. were that were you know, pre K, you know, when K Fabe was a thing, um, you know, you're living this character, this thing out in the world 24 right. seven. Was it hard for you? And I know it, it was hard for you in certain senses, but like when you came home for that 24 right. hours of what it is, was it, was it very hard to disconnect from the character like, like that with, or did it take, um, um, uh, or was it easy? Cause for smash, it was easy. He said, I just got, I get home and I just packed it at the door. Some guys, I don't know, I, your experience, I'm sure I know what the answer is, but just curious on your thoughts on, on that. I just unwind, man. I, I try to leave it, leave it right there at the, in, in the uh, laundry room, man. I dropped my bags there and that was it. I'm home. And usually from there, I'd go out to the pool, you know, and, uh, probably crack open a beer and just sit there and talk to the wife. You know, that's, uh, that's coming home, you know, and, uh, I know it used to drive the wife crazy. I'd get home and she'd want to go out and eat. <laughs> like, fuck, are you kidding me? I've been on the road for 35 days eating food. I don't want to go out and eat, but it's, it's unfair. You know, the wives get left at home and, uh, and, and you're gone for however long. And, you know, they have expectations, too. They need to be entertained, too, man. So you better uh, up your game a little bit. Yo, with that, let me ask you this. You are, you've you've admitted, we're not going to call you old. Right. But you've um, admitted you're older. You can't do yeah, what you used buddy. to do. You are probably the best health you've been in how many ever years you're oh, yeah. back in the wrestling industry you're probably the happiest you've ever been Damn. how do you limit yourself without going too much in that going a thousand miles per hour in the wrestling business you're you're you know you're you've got a family again yeah. you know your past mistakes how do you limit yourself and keep wrestling this small box and you move and be happy outside? well I, I try to do other things and i take the wife along you know, and we go and we'll 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 go to a town and I'll go ahead and do whatever I've got to do, but then we'll stay an extra day and look at things, enjoy the sights of that city. We did that in Boston, man, and uh, we had an unbelievable time just checking the history out in Boston. It was absolutely fabulous. One of my favorite times ever with my wife. 
I love it. Yeah, me too. I mean, you know, I think for, for most of us who perform, maybe have been in the public eye, most of my adult life has been spent there. And there was moments for me where I had to sort of get out of my own way. Oh, yeah. get, out, get out of get out of get out of here and get into here right that's what now, you do well the transition to doing that sometimes is very difficult um mm -hmm. for you was there a mantra was there anything that like or was there a, a, a moment a pivotal point i know that you know we can lose family members we can you know we'll miss funerals yeah. we'll miss weddings we'll miss births mm -hmm. all these other things but what was that moment for you you know where you said okay I'm not going to live the next 50 years like I did the first 50 or whatever. Yeah. You know, when I got sober, brother, everything changed, you know, and uh, I was so happy to actually be able to breathe without thinking about doing drugs. You know, I was a coke head, man. And uh, coke and alcohol, man, you know, and, and when I finally realized that I could live life sober, and that was, it took like two and a half years to get me completely sober. You know, I, I'd, I'd quit and then I'd, I'd slip up after four months and I'd try again. I'd slip up after eight months and finally the last time it took. And, uh, Every day is such a joy to me because I have absolutely no need for it. The thought never comes to my mind. Nothing happens in my life that could make me go back to that because I just don't have time for it. Because right now, my body feels great. My kids are happy. I'm happy. Things are going wonderfully. I'm trying to talk that woman into marrying me again. I think she's going to do it. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's an amazing story. You know, 24 years we were separated, you know, divorced for 24 years. Now we're hooking back up and it's just a great story and a great life. And uh, I got a second chance to smell the roses and I'm taking advantage of them. I really am. Well, I, I would think for uh, one of the world's greatest talkers, you could probably talk her to the wedding. Brother, she's heard that promo before. <laughs> she knows my shit. <laughs> she calls me out on it too, man. She'll say, uh, 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 you're not going there. Oh, Don't funny. play that game to me. I know this one. She's smart, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there a nervousness? I don't know where your relationship with her was compared to when you kind of got back into wrestling, especially with AEW. Was there apprehension on her part when, like, they come knocking on your door, like, "Hey, no, not Jake, at all. we want you on TV." Not at all. She didn't. She didn't know it, and uh, we hadn't. We hadn't really got going yet, you know. And uh, but no, she's. Uh, She's traveled with me to shows and she's seen how I am today. And she knows there's no no chance in hell that I'm going to drink. She has wine with her dinner and that's fine. It doesn't bother me at all. I have no inkling to jump back on that pony. And she's she's safe with that. It took some time, but she's absolutely safe with that. All right, Jake, you know, as an old drug addict myself alcoholic yeah i need to know where, where where did you score the best blow i mean you had 40 <laughs> years of just doing it like there had to have been that one place where you're like i'm going to boise idaho and i'm gonna hit blah 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 uh, for the mexico <laughs> city man I, I, I hooked up with some stuff there that just set me on fire <laughs> oh my god i remember that because the policeman delivered it to me to the door I was shitting myself. I didn't know whether to flush it or do a bump. So I did two bumps. <laughs> <laughs> and right. then you shit yourself. Sorry. Yeah, I shit myself. <laughs> I need to get this back on track. We got a few more minutes. <laughs> what are you yeah. talking about? This is completely on track. I mean, I, you, you know what? As the host. Is, hey, this is wrestling's Keith Richards, okay? We, we, have, we, to ask him, we have to ask wow. him. Wow. <laughs> is that a shot? <laughs> you made a <laughs> that was that, him. 
Yeah, I did pop them. No, no, that that's a compliment, my man. That's I a know compliment. That. I know that. You know, Jake, I don't know where your love for the industry was through everything, but when yeah. did you fall back in love? When did you go, I want to be part of wrestling today? When they knocked on my door. Mm. You know, because up until then, I was, I was just jealous. Oh. You know, jealous and angry at myself that I'd blown it, that I'd tossed it out the window over dope. Mm. You know, I mean, I, I quit at the height of my career, at the height. And uh, God, I hate myself for it because I miss so much. But I've done it. Now I've recaptured it. I'm, I'm out there a little bit, just enough to, to make me happy. And uh, Tony's given me the job to help guys with their interviews. I love doing that. I love to watch their expressions whenever I see it finally click. You know, it's like the light comes on and like, oh, <laughs> you know, and that's what it is, man. Uh, you know, listen, uh, I, I need to know. You were known for your your creative back in the day. Mm -hmm. Is Jake the Snake Roberts today in his creative process the same as back then? And what is the difference between your creative now as as opposed to then? You don't you don't try to fix something that's not broke, man. My creative process is still the same. I just leave it alone because it, it's always I've ne it's never failed me. So why would I change something that's never failed me? Well, you know, when we get a lot of the younger guys talking about how they sort of develop their characters, you hear different things from movies, TV shows, video games, whatever it is. There's a, there's a, there's a giant gambit of, of what they draw from. Right. You know, for Jake the Snake, you were always a fucking horror movie. You were a horror movie. You know, you were like the Hannibal Lecter kind of character the first of its kind now were you exposed to movies like that were you like thinking i gotta need to draw onto that i know you know because obviously being a creative person you dig de deep down you had a lot of childhood shit going down a lot of you, drama yeah 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 and you bring that up to the surface yeah. but was there yeah. anything that was like in maybe hollywood or the media or something you saw in a magazine or anything that would sort of you would take and kind of inspire you to be be that next level of, of that character. No, uh, the people that inspired me were other wrestlers. Oh. You know, uh, the uh, hero Matsuda, Danny Hodge, Bob Sweetan. I got a lot out of Bob Sweetan. A hell of a lot. Colonel Buck Robley, Terry Funk. You know, and I stole from those guys. You know, and that's what a smart man does. He knows where to steal his good shit. <laughs> uh listen for my final question yeah uh i i've i've got to know and listen to you talk for these last few minutes you go out there you're jake mm -hmm. the snake roberts yeah what's going through your mind like what what is what now that you're clean you, you've mm -hmm. done the resurgence people seem to love you what goes through mm -hmm. your mind are you still shocked that people still respond to you today like they did 30 years ago yeah that's still a little bit surprising it really is you know and uh i just when i walk out there man something clicks inside my body and my brain just goes <laughs> And it's like, I can feel and hear that buzz and I can feel it all over my body. And I know right then that I'm back on. And when I'm back on, brother, I just let, let loose and, let, and just start walking. Because I know whatever I do is gonna be right. I have that much confidence. You know, whether I wanna take them on a ride or do I wanna make them happy? How do I wanna play them tonight? And that's something you learn after being in the ring for years. You learn how to play a crowd. You know what it takes. No, not again. Oh, God damn it. God damn it. And he was just getting oh. comfortable. Oh, there he is. There He's he back. is. We lost there you is. there for a second. We lost you there for a second. 
Oh, did you lose me? Yes, you yeah. were just talking about the crowd loving you and and. Oh, okay. What happens is it clicks on, and, and I, once it clicks on, man, I know whatever I do is going to be right. Because you can't come into some towns and do use the same thing that you did the night before in Dallas, mm. or the day before that in Shreveport. Sometimes you got to play a different thing. You know, it's like going to a great restaurant. You know, they may have the greatest prime rib in the world, but if you've eaten prime rib for the last week, you're ready for a damn change. And you got to know how to change these people. You got to know when they're wanting a change. So take control, grab the bull by the horns, get up on that son bitch and ride that motherfucker till it drops. You know, and that's how you do it. Amen. Okay, so I, I, you know, this is probably a very unconventional question, but it's just kind of the way that my mind works. You know, when I'm in a backstage, there's, you know, I feel a, like I'm home, and I'm sure right. that you probably exactly right exactly. So, and I know that there's certain people that can come around, and I feel like wow, I can just be myself, right? Right. right. So, who walks in that room? In that backstage, what three other wrestlers or three other people besides your family members, all that, maybe, you know, co-workers, whatever. Who are those three people who walk in that room where you can kind of go, I'm just going to be good. Doing... Yeah, it's all good. Hacksaw, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, Bill Eady, and, uh, <laughs> and my wife. But uh, yeah, Hacksaw and and uh, my wife were one and two. Sorry, Bill. I mean, they know that I'm. They know that I'm just. They know who I am. Yeah, yeah. You know, they know what I look like with all my clothes off and all my gear off. They know what I'm like when I'm tired. And they can read that. Everybody else, I'm still performing for. Well, the real real reason Lars and I invited you on this podcast is we want you to adopt us as your sons. And yeah, yeah. Uh, we want to know. Why not? You... I've got eight already. <laughs> Fuck. Wow. You're busy. Yeah, snake was not a gimmick, brother. <laughs> well, Lars Roberts. Uh, uh, yes. Uh... I'm Dennis lethal from Roberts. about 12 feet. Man. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, you just like get into a room and somebody gets pregnant, obviously. Absolutely, man. It seems the way it, not the way it happened. Three people got pregnant just from this interview watching it. So as long as they don't want no money, I'm all right. Jake, today has been the most probably the most amazing interview. We are more fans of you now, and that's hard. So thank you so much. We'll oh, say our goodbyes. It off the air with you everybody at home the podcast is over go home jake thank you so much for hanging out and uh no everybody go home we'll talk to you guys we'll love later. to come back and do it again absolutely